The Law of the Sea Treaty Briefing. Will U.S. sovereignty be lost? Thank you very much. Thanks for coming today. Before I get to my main topic, I want to mention a couple stories that you may have missed. A former U.N. investigator from Australia by the name of Francis Montiel has come forward. His allegations have been reported in various Australian newspapers to say that uh, the United Nations, he has discovered after many years of working there as an investigator, is corrupt to the core, and that up to $500 million in humanitarian relief for the victims of the 2004 tsunami has been ripped off by the UN, $500 million. The Wall Street Journal subsequently reported that an anti-fraud unit at the UN has identified more than $610 million in allegedly tainted, allegedly tainted UN contracts. But the unit uh, may be closed down. All of this is necessary background, along with all the stories and investigations we know into the oil for food scandal, in order to understand why it's not surprising that a confidential source at the United Nations has come forward to us uh, to tell us that the International Seabed Authority under the Law of the Sea Treaty is also corrupt and has notorious management problems, suffers from both administrative and ethical oversight. We're told that this is common knowledge in the UN Office of Internal Oversight Services. Before I get into some of those particulars, let me tell you what we do know on the public record about the International Seabed Authority. Until 1998, and it officially came into existence in 94, its expenditures were covered by the United Nations budget. In 1998, it initiated a system of assessments, much like the UN operates, on member states that belong to the treaty organization. But as of August 2006, 51 members of the International Seabed Authority were officially in arrears and had failed to pay their dues to this new organization. 51 members, deadbeats. Only 65 members of the International Seabed Authority, less than half of its total membership, showed up at the entity's 12th session, causing the Secretary General of the ISA, Satya Nandan, to complain about poor attendance. We found that this is a frequent complaint about the activities and operations of the ISA. In fact, notes from a 2003 meeting of the International Seabed Authority reported, quote, noting the low level of attendance at the authorities' meetings in Kingston, Jamaica, and you wonder why there's low attendance at a tropical paradise like Jamaica, but noting the low attendance, the Secretary General said it had declined to the point where it was difficult to secure a quorum needed to make decisions. This is the International Seabed Authority in action. One participant uh, from the country of Benin was quoted as saying that the absence of some developing countries from the proceedings was, quote, due to the lack of resources. And he, quote, supported the idea of providing funds for participation of African states, especially least developed countries, in the work of the authority. <laughs> They don't have enough money to run their operations, but they need more in order to pay countries to show up. That's the International Seabed Authority. Of course, U.S. ratification of the Law of the Sea Treaty would mean that they'd suddenly be getting millions and millions of more dollars that they could perhaps use to pay countries to actually show up at their meetings. And this is a critical point that needs to be made that if the Senate ratifies this treaty, it will, in effect, constitute a financial bailout of a failing and dysfunctional UN bureaucracy. But the Senate Foreign Relations Committee has not even examined, in a cursory manner, the operations of the International Seabed Authority. It hasn't taken any look at all at them. The ISA 
is so racked by corruption, scandal, and turmoil that it hasn't had a chief of administration for five years. This is the person who is supposed to handle day-to-day -day operations and manage the place. There is no ethics office for the International Seabed Authority and no requirement for ISA employees to disclose any potential conflicts of interest in their dealings. The United Nations source warned us against going to the office of the Secretary General of the ISA for information about problems in the agency, saying, nobody will tell you the truth. The ISA Secretary General is a veteran UN bureaucrat. We were tipped off by this source to the dramatic case of somebody named Niti Samthambaya, who had briefly held the position of Chief of Administration and Management at the ISA. He was hired in December 2001. Six months later, he says he wrote a letter to the Secretary General of the ISA requesting a meeting to discuss various sensitive issues including, quote, mismanagement and irregularities in the organization. One month later, he was fired. The Secretary General claims he didn't receive the letter, and he charged Sam Thambaya with being incompetent and not qualified for the post. A complaint was filed against the ISA Secretary General with the UN Administrative Tribunal which issued a judgment on January 31st, 2005 that's been posted on its website. While it dismissed his complaint, the judgment itself, and I ask you to take a look at it, is full of charges and countercharges, which suggest a working environment at the ISA that certainly puts into question their ability to manage the oceans of the world. The tribunal judgment in this case is full of sensational allegations and charges, some having to do with sexual harassment, uh, downloading pornography. I mean, there's no way, really, to determine who is telling the truth and when, whether any of these allegations are true or not. They may have been peddled by the Secretary General of the ISA in order to try to discredit Mr. Sam Thambaya and divert attention from the charges of mismanagement and irregularities in the ISA. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, it would be a gross dereliction of duty for the United States Senate to vote on this treaty without getting to the bottom of the allegations of corruption and mismanagement in the ISA. Thank you. The Law of the Sea Treaty Briefing. Will U.S. sovereignty be lost? For more information, log on to heritage.org.